I welcome you back to the channel. In this video, we shall look at part two of the teaching on deceiving spirits, 22 doctrines of demons that are sending countless millions to eternal damnation. Deceiving spirits, 22 doctrines of demons that are sending countless millions to eternal damnation. As you key into this teaching, I pray and believe that your life shall never be the same again. You will remember that we concluded part one of the teaching with doctrine number five. We shall therefore start part two with doctrine number six. The sixth doctrine of demons is that the Holy Bible is not the only inspired written word of God and that there are other holy books. However, the question we need to ask ourselves is this. Who inspired these other holy books? If they were inspired by God, like the Holy Bible, how come their words contradict the words of the Bible? This doctrine is another lie of the devil. Satan resorted to this lie in order to divert people's attention away from the Word of God, which the Bible is. This is not a new trick by the enemy of God and man. You will probably recall that in the Garden of Eden, God gave his word to Adam and Eve. The word that God gave was to ensure that the couple lived. However, in Genesis chapter 3, the serpent came and made sure that they rejected and revolted against the word of their creator. The result was that they died. The word of the serpent, which they embraced and followed, could not keep them alive. The Holy Bible is the only inspired written word of God and humans reject it to their own damnation. The seventh demonic doctrine that we are looking at is that other ways lead to God apart from Jesus Christ. What the religions of the world teach is that they have other ways that lead to God that are different from Jesus Christ. However, this is a complete lie. The only way by which God gives eternal life to humans is through his word. Adam and Eve dared God by rejecting his word. The result was that they died. It is well known that Jesus Christ is the word of God. That is, the word that became flesh. It is only through him that we can have life 
more abundant. All other ways lead to hell. This is why the Bible says in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, The eighth doctrine of demons is that good works alone can save human beings. Evil spirits themselves know that this is arrant nonsense, but they still perpetuate the doctrine because they know that it feeds human pride. What most people don't care to remember is that the human race is a fallen race and was described by God as flesh. This is according to Genesis chapter 6 verse 13. The verse reads, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. This simply indicates that the verdict of God on the flesh is destruction. Nothing that proceeds from the flesh can please God. This is why the Bible also says in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, But we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away this is why one must repent and be born again before one's works can be acceptable before God. For anyone to then say that their good works can save them is an exercise in self-deception. You have been warned. The ninth doctrine of demons that we are going to consider is that one can converse with the dead. This is usually called a science. It is a practice whereby a dead person's spirit is summoned by a medium so that the dead person can converse and exchange messages with a living person. This is a practice that has been around for thousands of years, especially in pagan cultures. It is still practiced today in many places around the world. However, the Word of God frowns on it. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19 And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them 
that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter should not people seek unto their God for the living to seek the dead the truth is that whenever a science is done the spirit summoned is not the spirit of the dead person but a familiar spirit it is a deception of the devil this practice is encouraged because it enables the kingdom of darkness to put a lot of people under bondages People have been known to enter into covenants with evil spirits as a result of such practices. The tenth demon doctrine that we shall consider here is that there are many gods This is called pantheism. Now, how any human being can fall for this crap, beggars believe. Consider this. If truly there are many gods, would that not lead to chaos in creation? Which gods will be responsible for what? Moses told the Israelis in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Considering that the God of Israel is the God of all creation. There is only one God. However, there are three persons in the Godhead. That is, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible also says in Isaiah chapter 46, Verse 9 Remember the former things of old For I am God And there is none else I am God And there is none like me However Even though there are, there are all sorts of evil spirits masquerading as gods we know for sure that there is only one true god this god is the god of all gods pantheism is a doctrine of devils it is meant to confuse and de deceive humans The eleventh doctrine of demons. That we shall look at is that following God through the Lord Jesus Christ is a hindrance to fulfillment. This is in reference to the statement of the Lord Jesus in the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 16 verse 24 the verse states then Jesus said to his disciples if anyone desires to be my disciple let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me 
People have therefore been taught that coming to Jesus will kill all their initiatives and they will not be able to express themselves. Satan sold this same lie to Eve in the Garden of Eden when he told her that she did not need to allow herself and her husband to be shackled by God. This story is found in Genesis chapter 3. However, the devil did not tell Eve the consequences of her actions. In the same way, Satan does not tell all those who do not want to be burdened by Jesus what the consequences of their actions will be. Happily, the Lord Jesus spoke about the nature of his burden in Matthew chapter 11 verse 30. The verse reads, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I believe everyone should consider that. Even if the Lord Jesus Christ has been misrepresented to you, you only need to consider his words. Where he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The twelfth doctrine of demons to look at is that one's best life is outside the word of God. It was the serpent who first expressed this, this same sentiment to Eve in Genesis chapter 3. He told the woman that by ignoring God's word, she and her husband will come to know him and will not die. Actually, he assured her that the best thing for them to do, the best deal for them, was to throw the word of God out of the window and they will be fine. Evil spirits are still peddling the same lie to humans, especially Christians. The devil will never let people realize that to live outside the word of God means death and eternal separation from God. The thirteenth doctrine of demons is that one does not need Jesus Christ to go to heaven. This doctrine is very popular, especially in these days of near-death experiences. When people think they can go to heaven without Jesus Christ. And we have seen many stories of near death experiences of people saying that they went to heaven briefly and they came back, and you will never hear them mentioning the name of Jesus. And what he told them, or what he said about eternal life. The 
the doctrine emphasizes that in order to go to heaven, people only need to be religious and to do good works. The devil lied to people that religion and good works could atone for sin. The truth is that only the blood of Jesus can atone for sin and thus get them ready for heaven. Doctrine number 14, that is the 14th demonic doctrine that we shall look at is that God did not create anything and that things just evolved. This doctrine is actually the lie behind the theory of evolution. However, the Holy Bible debunks this mindless theory. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, which states, In the beginning, God, created the heavens and the earth. That single verse of the Bible destroys the theory of evolution. The devil is not ready to give God the glory for the work of creation and thus came up with this deceptive doctrine. The ultimate aim of this doctrine is to ensure that people have no sense of accountability to anyone for the way they live. And this will ensure that they live any way they want because they believe they are not going to account to anyone for their lives. But you have been warned that God is the creator of all things, including you. That every soul, everyone, shall be accountable to Him. That is why Jesus came to prepare humans, to save humans, and to get them ready for the time they will meet God, the Creator. Because you know what? Every human that has ever lived on this earth has an appointment with God. Whether they like it or not, whether they believe it or not, that is the truth. Now, the fifteenth doctrine of demons that we are looking at is that the Holy Bible has been doctored. That is, it has been changed and has thus lost its credibility. This is another lie of the enemy of God and man. Do not forget that Satan has used this particular doctrine to keep many people from feasting on the bread of heaven, which the Bible is. Simply because the devil could not remove the Bible from the surface of the earth, he decided that the next best thing to do is to discredit 
the word of God. From the beginning, evil spirits have always sought to discredit the word of God. You must not forget what happened in the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3, when Satan discredited, played down, and provided a substitute to the word of God given to Adam and Eve. But we all saw that the substitute provided by the devil could not save Adam and Eve. And that, that was how the couple passed mystery, diseases, death, and separation from God down to their descendants. So there is no substitute for the word of God. The word of God cannot be discredited by anyone. The word of God remains infallible. The word of God is true forevermore. The word of God remains the only hope for humans. The word of God is the final court of appeal for humans. There is no substitute. And the final part of this teaching, we shall look at the remaining doctrines of the 22 we set out to consider at the start. Please like and share the video and if you have not subscribed to the channel, do not forget to do so. Thank you so much and God bless you.